to gather here in this sanctuary and to be in your presence, Heavenly Father. We pray for all those who are here, that we may hear a word to encourage us, Lord God. We pray for those who are on the way, Father, that they may join with us and also unite with us as we worship you. Father, we welcome now the Holy Spirit into our hearts and to this sanctuary, Lord God, that we will move forward in this life that you allow us to live, Lord God, knowing that with you all things are possible. So thank you, Lord, for this day. Let us celebrate you, Lord God, on this first Sunday, Lord God, as we prepare our hearts and minds for communion, Lord God. Help us to examine ourselves, Lord God. Ask for forgiveness, Father, and prepare ourselves to partake of communion, Lord God, and to go out into this world different from the way that we came in. We pray for our pastor this morning, Lord God, as he prepares his heart and his mind to bring forth the word that all that we say and do, give your name, glory, and honor. And in your holy and precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. Today I love to praise His holy name. He's my rock. He's my rock. My rock. My rock. My soul. My shield. My heart is the wind. He's a wind in the middle.
Pastor, I am so sorry I don't have on my glasses. And okay, Psalms 143, verse, uh, verse 10. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. For your name's sake, Lord, preserve my life in your righteousness. Hurry me out of hurry me out of trouble. In your unfailing love, silence my enemies, destroy all my foes, for I am your servant. Amen. Amen. You deserve the glory and the honor. I lift my hands. I lift my hands. We worship and I bless and I bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ and good morning disciples of Northside Baptist Church. Amen. We greet you, those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live. We thank God for you. We thank God that you have chosen to join us on this morning. We pray now that you will share with others that you are in worship at Northside. Invite them to join you and to join us as we worship God in spirit and in truth. We are returning in some ways to some of the things we have been doing, and that includes singing of an opening hymn. And on first Sundays, it has been our custom that we would sing that great 
hymn of the church, hymn 250. For those who are here, it is in their hymnals. For those who are watching online, the words are appearing on the screen in front of you. Hymn 250 says, Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lead me to Calvary. And I invite you, if you're watching us online, if you're able to stand, those who are in the sanctuary, if you are able to stand, we will sing all four verses of hymn number 250, Lead Me to Calvary. King of my life, I crown thee. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thy shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crown, lead me, lead me to Calvary. Oh, lest I, oh, lest I forget. Let us sing. Let's be like Mary through the blue. Come with the gift. Come with the gift to me. Even. Show to me now the empty tomb. Lead me. Lead me to Calvary. Oh, lest I, oh, lest I forget. That last verse, may I, may I be with Lord to bear, Lord to bear, daily my cross for thee, even the cup, even thy cup, a grief to, to share, thou hast borne all, hast for me. All. for the reminder, God, of what you suffered and what you bore in order that we might have the assurance, the guarantee, the promise of eternal life. And God, as we, your people, gather to worship you, we don't gather for form, we don't gather for fashion, but God, we gather so that you may get glory out of this moment. So now, God, anything that would get in the way, anything that would disrupt us, anything that would distract us, God, anything that would cause us to take our focus off of you, God, take it away from us right now, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Lord, inhabit this sanctuary where we are. Inhabit the places of worship where people are watching us online. Even now, God, be present with us. Allow that your spirit would so move that we will be different than we were even when we woke up this morning. God, use us and bless us. Covenant now with us, God, so that we might give your name the honor, the glory, and the praise you deserve. Now, God, help us as we pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Come on, let's worship God. The blood of Jesus. Yes, my soul. Can you make that your testimony today? The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. What does it do? It restores our soul. Yeah, yeah. So these next couple of things are just some things for those who are worshiping in the house with us. Uh, we are trying to keep ourselves as safe as we can. So to that end, if you missed it on the way in, the communion elements are outside on a table for you. Our worship guides are available from our ushers. They are on a table as well, as is the place where you can give. If you have brought your tithe and offering, all of that is outside so that we are able to continue to try to conduct ourselves in as touchless an environment as we possibly can, even while we are in person and together. Amen. For those of you who are joining us online, we welcome you and we bless God for your presence every Sunday. It is the custom of our church to recite the vision that God has given to us, and we, it goes this way. Northside Baptist Church is intentional about making and growing disciples and empowering people to live changed lives. Amen. And for this year of 2022, the theme that the Lord has had us working with, and you're going to hear it a little bit again a little bit later in the sermon, is that we are following where Jesus leads us. Amen. A couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, today is the first Sunday, the first day in the month of May. 
And on every first Sunday, we make sure we celebrate and anticipate celebrating people who have birthdays and people who have anniversaries. So if there's anybody in the house who's having a birthday in the month of May, amen. I see you, Sister Teresa Foster. God bless you, Dean Kennedy. Amen. Amen. I was talking to Sister Foster the other day, and she told me when her birthday was, and she informed me that her birthday is a national holiday. Amen. So we are grateful to know somebody like that. We have disciples in our fellowship, uh, one in particular who will reach the milestone of 95 years of age. Amen. And then those of you who are celebrating anniversaries, any anniversaries in the month of May, there are probably some online. God bless you for those of you who are celebrating, and we pray God's continued steadfast blessings on your life. So this week, we kind of roll back into our, our full schedule. On, on Tuesday night, we're going to kick off our, we know that Wednesday noon is good for those persons who may be retired or may be working at home or have that time slot available. But we also wanted to uh, reinstitute our Tuesday, our evening Bible study. And so on Tuesday evening at seven o'clock from seven until eight, we will have our Bible study session. Um, we will get the Tuesday night group up to speed with where the Wednesday group has been. Uh, we are doing a study on the compassionate Christ as we look at some of the healing miracles of Jesus Christ that are recorded by Mark, the gospel writer. So Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, uh, if you've never been a part of a Bible study group, if you are concerned uh, that... You don't know everything in the Bible. Let me assure you, none of us knows everything in the Bible. And it is an opportunity for all of us to learn and to learn from each other. So Tuesday night at 7 o'clock and then Wednesday at 12 o'clock noon, we will do the same lesson. And then last week I had a learning because I thought that, you know, after two years that uh, we would want or need a break from praying three times a week. And I was informed by the folk on the prayer call, no, Pastor, we want to meet on Mondays and Wednesdays. So we will pick back up again Monday and Wednesday at 645. The dial-in number is in your worship guide. It's also on the screen. Uh, we invite you to join us. We start at 645. Dance ministry will be rehearsing this week. Uh, I have to believe that given that they are planning to minister in worship soon, that rehearsals are pretty far along now, but if you want to come out and watch what they do, you are certainly invited to come Friday at 6 o'clock and then Saturday at 1 o'clock. And as always, we want to remind you about Sunday school on Sunday mornings. Again, we are continuing to live this kind of hybrid life. Uh, we are doing Bible study still on our church conference call number the 605-475-4000 number. That's Sunday mornings at 9.30. Uh, you can come to the church if you want to and call from your cell phone or if you're worshiping from home, you can do that. We wanna make sure that we extend as many opportunities for us to learn and for us to be in study as we possibly can. Uh, I believe those are the announcements that we need to lift up today. Of course, we certainly thank God for each and every one of you uh, as you continue to walk with us, as we continue to uh, live into what will be our new normal. We will never be what we once were, but I believe that by trusting God and following what is wise and prudent behavior, we will be able to keep one another safe and we will be able to continue to be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, we certainly celebrate uh, today the Lord's Supper, and if you don't already have your elements at home for the celebration time when we come to the Lord's table, we invite you to get them. Uh, I uh, want you to find something that will help you remember Jesus. Uh, now, if it's, if it's not necessarily unleavened bread and grape juice, Make sure it's something that will help you remember who? Jesus. Jesus. All right. Amen. 
Um, as we move into our time of giving, we want to remind you of how grateful we are that you have continued to support the work of ministry. Work began this week, in fact, on the renovations that we've been planning to do in room one of our building. Amen. Amen. We, that project is being overseen faithfully by a team of committed disciples, and we are just grateful for the ways in which even while we are working our way, and I'm going to stop saying it when it's over, but as we are working our way back to the new reality, God is allowing us to continue to do ministry in this place. And it is happening because of your faithfulness, because of your generosity. On First Sundays, we not only receive our tithes and offerings, but we also invite you to give a little bit more, to dig a little bit more deeply. So the persons who run into problems, persons who run into challenges, if there is a need, they can come to the church and we can be that place. We can be that people that help them. Of course, we encourage as much as possible you to give electronically through Givelify. You can find us in your um, app store, the Givelify app, or through Cash App, dollar sign, Northside BC, Baltimore. Or as many of our disciples do, bring the tithe, send the tithe. All of it is appreciated, and we bless God for you as you help us be a blessing in this community. Our custom in this moment is always to take evidence of God's goodness to us, whether it is the offering envelope or whether it is our device, whether it is our hand. We lift it towards heaven and we make a statement about it and we make a statement about our God. And I invite you to repeat it after me. Divine love, through me, blesses and multiplies this gift. It blesses the receiver and returns to the giver, blessed and multiplied. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the gift and giver. Thank you, God, for what we know you will do because of our faithfulness and our obedience. Now, God, bless it and bless us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us receive our music ministry, and then we will return with a word from the Lord. Amen. King of Love! 
this King of Glory. us today. Amen. If you have your Bible, I invite you to turn to the Gospel of John, the 21st chapter, verses 15 through 19. John chapter 21, verses 15 through 19. Um, I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. 
So if what I read is slightly different than what you have in front of you, that might be the explanation. And if you are able to stand in honor of the word of God, if you are physically able, that we would ask you to do so. If you're not able, that's fine. But if we are physically able to stand and honor God's word, we invite you to do so. Uh, let me ask our team, do we have five folk in the room that have it? Not in this room, in the virtual room. I think we do. And I know we got five in this room. Amen. Amen. Hear now the word of the Lord. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished but when you grow old you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go he said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God after this he said to him follow me I read in your hearing, John chapter 21, verses 15 through 19. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. God, in the, in the midst of all that we are worried, consumed, bothered, troubled, distracted, saddened, and frightened by. We thank you, God, that your word still speaks words to us that we need to hear. Now, God, I pray that you would use this your servant. I pray, God, that not my words, but that your words would be spoken in this moment to the end that you get glory, you get honor, and to the end, God, that if someone needs to make a change in his or her life, that they will do so. Through Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. So today, as the Lord allows, I want to talk a few minutes to you about he was only trying to help us. It's a strange title for a sermon, I know. He was only trying to help us. I will never forget the moment as long as I live. Never will I forget this moment. It was the spring of my freshman year at Morehouse College. I had been selected, I had auditioned to participate in the Morehouse College Glee Club's annual tour. We boarded a trailway bus outside of Dansby Hall and we went up the mid part of this country, going to Boston and coming back down making our way back to Atlanta. 21 days we toured singing as Goodwill Ambassadors of Morehouse College. We'd gotten to one of the last stops on the tour and we were scheduled to sing at the 19th, the historic 
19th Street Baptist Church on 16th Street in Washington, D.C., a great church that even to this day is still doing great things. Before every concert, we would warm up, kind of like the choir does every Sunday morning before they lead us in worship. We would warm up and we would prepare. We would go over several of the songs that Dr. Wendell Whalem, our conductor and chair of the music department, would choose so that he could be sure, he could be confident that when he pulled those out for us to sing, that we would sing them. On this night, though, I learned a lesson about somebody who was trying to help all of us as he tried to help one of us. See, the Baltimore, Washington area was and is still an area where Morehouse recruits heavily for its students. And when we got to the Washington concert, because the Baltimore, Washington area was home for so many of us, many of us looked forward to finally having some food that we recognized from our mama's table and we looked forward to spending the night in beds that we actually could fit into in our parents houses at least for one night before we left though our instructions were clear be at the church 90 minutes before the concert not 89 minutes not 87 minutes 90 minutes before the concert. The concert was scheduled to begin at 7.30. Therefore, we were supposed to be at the church at... Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Let's try that one again. <laughs> the concert began at 7.30. Therefore, we needed to be at the church at... Oh, okay. <laughs> There we were, right? We were midway through one of the songs when we noticed at the back of the church the president and the business manager and one of our other officers walking down the aisle, making their way to the choir loft where we were standing. It was 6.15 or so. When Dr. Whalem saw our president and this other officer. Doc, as we called him with great affection, stopped us from singing altogether. He put down his baton and turned and gave his full and undivided attention to our president and business manager. At which point, Dr. Whalen proceeded to give one of the most memorable tongue lashings and lectures I've ever heard one human being give to another. The years have faded much of what Doc actually said. None of the words were out of order. But the spirit and the sentiment of what happened in that moment are as clear to me today as they are the sun on a hot, cloudless summer afternoon. The lecture began something like this. How nice of you to join us. <laughs> Did you realize that we were supposed to be here at 6 o'clock? So for my young people, anybody who's you know, 21 or so and under. Let me, let me hope you today, and this one is free. I learned a couple of lessons that day. One of which is that when you are in deep trouble, sometimes the best thing you can say is nothing at all. Sometimes one of the best things you can do is just keep your lips zipped did not appreciate that strategy and so he tried to defend himself Lord have mercy he shared with those of us who had not yet had a chance to go home and eat dinner from our mama's table that he had taken the other ranking officer with him and they had had dinner at 
his, his mama's table. Where he and our vice president and our president's mama and daddy sat and shared. And then he offered this ex explanation. He said, well, you know, we were returning to the Washington, D.C. area during rush hour and traffic is bad. Yeah. The only thing I was glad about in that moment was that I was a lowly freshman and I had no official responsibilities. Hopefully by now the picture is clear, right? I will not go through the entire moment because that moment lasted 35 minutes and we all had to stand there while the lecture took place. But one of the things I do remember is that on that day, Dr. Whalum said, not just to our president, but to all the rest of us, you cannot lead from behind. If you are going to lead, you must be willing to get there before everybody else and be prepared to stay after everybody else leaves and goes home. Because that is what is required of a leader. And what I am trying to do, Dr. Whalum said, is to teach you how to be leaders so that you can learn how to teach others how to be good leaders. At that point, 35 minutes into the lecture, Doc put his baton down and walked off the stand in disgust. All of us were afraid to move because we didn't want some of that coming in our direction. But here, here's what I want to tell you. Not only did I learn that day that you can't lead from behind, but that some lessons are not pleasant. And every now and then, the Lord and maybe the one who is the leader in your circle is going to have to say something to us that might not make us feel good, but that it will be good for us. Amen, lights. This moment in John 21 where we encounter this conversation between Jesus and Simon Peter is one of those moments where we get to see a, a study of how to teach some lessons that all of us need to make sure we learn. However, this lesson was being taught by Jesus and it was being taught to the lead apostle in the presence and in the company of everybody else. But it stands, this conversation, it stands to remind us about what happens and how Jesus will stop at nothing to make sure we understand what is expected of us. This passage starts out with Jesus asking a question. And the question, right, seems simple and harmless enough. Just like the question that Doc asked our president, do you know what time it is? Jesus asked Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Now Simon, Peter knows the answer and he thinks that if he just answers quickly that it will all be over and this little examination will be done. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus, though, turns the table on Simon Peter and for a second time, he asks him this same question. Simon, do you love me? Again, a second time says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Now, both of the times that Simon's answered, Jesus responds by saying, feed my lambs and then tend my sheep. Then in verse 17, for a third time, Simon Peter gets the question. Simon, son of John. Do you love me? At this point, the Bible says Simon Peter felt hurt because Jesus would dare ask him three times, do you love me? Simon Peter got his feelings hurt and Simon Peter starts to feel some kind of way and he gets all entangled in his feelings not understanding that Jesus is trying to teach him a lesson that all of us need to learn if we're going to follow Jesus. 
So let me try to show you what I see in this text as Jesus shares something with Simon Peter and shares it with us that is only trying to help us. The first thing I want to offer is that in the asking of the question three times, Jesus is teaching Peter and he's teaching us that we cannot change what we are unwilling to confront. Peter obviously had a high opinion of his loyalty and probably thought himself and thought of himself as the model disciple. After all, he was the one to whom Jesus had spoken and had said, Thou art Simon Barjona, and upon this rock I will build my church. But now it feels like something has shifted. Now it feels like something has happened. And, and you know how we get, right? If, if the leader, the one who we're supposed to be following, calls us up, we decide quickly, I don't need to take this. I didn't sign up for this. And, and Simon Peter says, Lord, I, I can't believe that you would ask me that question. Remember, though, Jesus asked Simon Peter this question three times. And it was three times that Simon Peter denied that he ever knew Jesus. Jesus was just trying to get Simon Peter to confront his own challenges as a disciple. His propensity when times got tight and situations got sticky to forget conveniently about who he had said Jesus was. Okay, let me, let me, let me see if I can find somebody's address. See, when things are going well for us, when things are going the way we want them to, the week after the income tax refund has arrived in the bank account, we don't have any trouble blessing God's name in that moment. But in the moment when it's a little challenging and in the moment when it's not clear how it's going to work out, somebody comes alongside of us and asks us three times, aren't you a leader? Aren't you a follower? Aren't you somebody who claims that God is good all the time? We learn that in order for us to be able to change some things, we've got to confront them. One of the books I'm reading right now, The Power of Regret, I strongly recommend it, talks about this, this business, about how you and I must be willing to confront the uncomfortable. Peter needed to confront his history of denial. I don't know, and quite frankly, I really don't care what each one of us needs to confront, but all of us got something we need to be working on. All of us have some unfinished business. All of us have some issues that are unresolved. All of us have some problems that have not been settled. All of us have some challenges that we're still facing. And the last thing we can afford to do is to act like they don't exist. Simon Peter, do you love me? Yeah, Jesus, you know I love you. Simon Peter, do you love me? Yeah, Jesus, I, yeah, you know I love you. Simon Peter, do you love me? Why would you ask me a question like that? We can't change. Well, we're not willing to confront. Secondly, Jesus reminds Peter that Peter and the disciples have been given an assignment that no one else has been given. He says, feed my sheep. Care for the lambs. Feed my sheep. That assignment would position Peter and it positions you and me to by our example show the world what really matters to us. The assignment that is ours and the, the reckoning we need to learn from this text is this, that folk really don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Jesus tells Simon Peter, feed my sheep, 
care for the lambs, feed my sheep. Jesus does not tell the church to be the most entertaining place in people's lives. Lord have mercy. Jesus does not tell Simon Peter that our assignment is to be the most engaging place. But our assignment, beloved, is to feed the sheep. To make sure that we are in a place and we are in a position and we are in an opportunity to be able to care for one another. I don't know about your experiences growing up, but I've, I've seen too many people get hurt in church. I've seen too many people have to fight fights they should not have had to fight in church. If we're really going to be the church and if we're really going to help somebody, we need to say to one another, we are no longer going to fight one another in church. Church is not the place where we come to validate our insecurities that we can't work out somewhere else. What is the assignment of the church? Feed my sheep. Protect my lambs. Feed my sheep. And here, watch this. We get, we get to do it with an assistance program that's unparalleled anywhere else. All we have to do is if we do our part, then the Lord Jesus himself will take care of the rest. Remember what it says in John 14, and I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all souls unto myself. That's, that's him trying to help us. Help us to remember that the stuff that we frequently focus on really doesn't amount to a hill of beans. But we got to make sure we love one another and that we lift up Jesus. John 14, Jesus says, by this they will know that you are unique. By this they will know that you are special. By this they will know that you are mine. Love one another. He doesn't say anything to us about us beating up on one another. What does he say? Love one another. Mm. You all remember that song, right? I love you. I need you. That's what we need to be doing. We need to make sure that we love one another. Jesus reminds us in this challenging way that he addresses Simon Peter that you have the responsibility to make sure that those who are wounded out in the world find love. You need to make sure that those who get knocked down and beat up every day of their life trying to go out and put food on the table and trying to keep a roof over their heads, that your job is not to tell them where they failed, but your job is to put your arms around them and embrace them and support them and encourage them and love them the same way you want to be loved when you've fallen down. Thirdly and last, Jesus says some interesting concluding words. Jesus says, follow me. Follow me. Right? That is our, that's our how-to guide. Follow me. We don't need new strategies we need to make sure the ones we've already been given that we practice them follow me one of the things I learned early on is that you can't lead people where you have never been 
And what Jesus is trying to say to Simon Peter, and sometimes we have to hear it in uncomfortable ways, is that before we can try to tell somebody else how good God is, we need to make sure we are clear about how good God is. Before we can tell somebody else what they ought to be doing, and how much they ought to be reading the Bible and how much they ought to be doing in the church. That maybe we are the ones who need to make sure that we are doing what we're telling somebody else to do. It's hard to tell somebody how to get where you've never been. Jesus says, follow me. So what does our strategy look like? What does our game plan look like? Follow Jesus. What is our way we're going to accomplish it? And what is the, the plan for how we're going to get it done? Follow Jesus. He was only trying to help us. He was only trying to make it clear to us what we needed to do. We don't need to be the most entertaining game in town. There's more channels and more streaming services than you can shake a stick at now. The church does not need to be the place where folks sit back and watch what happens. The church needs to be the place where something that happens permeates and bounces back and forth and moves from side to side and it becomes uh, something that is impactful on everybody in the place. And you know what? I love how simple and how profound Jesus makes this. He says, listen, we've got to understand that our assignment is supported by how well you do what I tell you to do. Jesus says, follow me. Well, if you want some examples, if you need some, some illustrations from John 21, I invite you to flip on over to the second chapter of Paul's letter to the Philippians. I want to do a little bit of a, a hybrid sharing of this translation. In one moment, I want to read it from the message, and in the other moment, I want to read it from the King James Version, which is the one that most of us grew up listening to. Here is, here is what it says. If you've gotten anything out of all of this following of Jesus, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor. This is the message translation. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. And then in verse 5 in the King James translation, it says it this way. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to become a servant, and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and he became obedient unto death, even the death on a cross. And because of this, therefore, God has highly exalted him and has given him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, the saints must follow at the name of Jesus the one who is able to erase all of our sins at the name of Jesus the one who's able to make a way out of no way at the name of Jesus the one who picked me up and turned me around and set my feet on solid ground at the name of Jesus the one who loved me when I could not love myself at the name of Jesus 
the one who forgave me when I would not forgive myself at the name of Jesus who I've given my children and my family members over to at the name of Jesus every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father we want to know how to do it we want words that are gonna help us at the name of Jesus Christ we have victory at the name of Jesus Christ we have encouragement at the name of Jesus Christ we have hope in the name of Jesus Christ we get joy because of the name of Jesus Christ we have victory as a result of the name of Jesus Christ no weapon formed against you shall prosper because of the name of Jesus Christ demons must tremble at the name of Jesus Christ the devil's got to learn how to leave you alone at the name of Jesus Christ the blood that spilled from Calvary's hill is still able to cleanse heal and deliver you and me yes at the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah bless his holy name at the name of Jesus Christ all of it gets made right all of it gets put in order at the name of Jesus Christ hymn writer has said tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know Thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I don't know if you are in the room where we are or if you are watching us online, but if you don't have the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you haven't already understood that in order to conquer it you've got to confront it if you haven't understood yet the importance of being in the body of loving people and if you haven't understood yet that Jesus Christ is able to take care of every each and every situation we invite you right now don't wait another moment don't wait another day make the decision to rely and to trust on Jesus Christ Make sure you don't walk out of the moment of worship without being absolutely, positively confident that the Lord's got you and that you have the Lord in your life. Amen. And so we extend the invitation to discipleship. We extend the opportunity to anyone who does not have a church family anyone who does not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ whether you are with us in person or whether you are watching us online we invite you and we ask that everyone who is in the sanctuary if you would please stand you will find this hymn on page 391 Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I've proved him o'er and o'er Jesus Jesus precious Jesus Oh, for grace to trust him more. We're going to sing the first verse and the chorus. The invitation is extended. Is there someone who will come? Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Is there one who will come? To take him at his word. Just, just to rest upon his just to know just is there one who will come we invite you thus saith the lord jesus 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 how i trust is there one we invite you online we invite you him or and or jesus For grace, oh, for grace, let's do the chorus one more time. Jesus, 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. first time back at the table in over two years and God has kept you somebody ought to just say thank you Jesus thank you God through danger seen and un I know what I'm supposed to do but I just need a minute because when I think about what could have happened Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Yes. Nobody but the Lord. Nobody yeah. but Jesus. Thank you, God. Mm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my wife has reminded me to remind you that COVID has passed by Northside in terms of any one of us dying. Mm -hmm. And the other part of the news is, it's not because we are so good. It's because God is so great. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. We are, um, our deacons will be coming to stand in a minute. Uh, we have the covenant of our church that we have uh, resurrected and we've pulled it out. And we want to invite you to share it as we get ready to come to the Lord's table. If everyone has a worship guide, the covenant is on the back of the worship guide. Together, let us read. Having accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, and having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pledge ourselves as members of His Church, as God shall enable us, to seek God's guidance and help in prayer for ourselves for others and for the church, to endeavor so to live that in character, in conduct, and in conversation, 
we may commend to others the Christ whose we are and whom we serve, to give generously and cheerfully as God shall prosper us for the work of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel, to support the worship of the church by faithful attendance upon its services, and to endeavor to win others for Christ and the church. Keep us, O God, by the help of thy Holy Spirit, steadfast and faithful in the performance of these promises to the glory of Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let me invite again those of you who are joining us online to find whatever elements you need to employ so that as we come to the moment of the Lord's Supper, you will have what you need. Prayerfully, everyone who is in the room with us here in the sanctuary, you have been able to get your elements outside. We want all of us to stay safe. We want all of us to stay protected. Bless you. the protocols we need to maintain. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this table, for what it represents, for what it symbolizes, and what it reminds us of. Thank you, God, for the bread and the cup. To remind us of the body that was broken and the blood that was shed so that we might have new and eternal life. Now, God, we pray that you would transform the bread and the cup. Allow them not to feed our bodies, God, but allow them to encourage us in our spirits for the living of these days. Thank you, God, for this table, which was set before us even before the foundations of the world were put in place so that those of us who come now might have the assurance of that which you've promised, eternal life with you. We pray your blessings on us and on it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Bible teaches us that on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he had gathered his disciples together, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them and said, take this and eat. This is my body broken for you. In the same manner, after he took the bread, he took the cup, and he gave it to them. And he said, this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. 
I invite you now to peel back and take the bread in your hand. Let us lift it towards heaven. Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and said to them, take this and eat. Amen. In the same manner, Deacon Lewis. In the same manner, after he had taken the bread, he took the cup and gave it to them and said, this is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. As the world drinks so that it may forget, let us drink so that we will remember. Amen. 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 One of the gifts of being in fellowship with other believers is to be able to share worship and to share this special moment. Now everybody, please put your mask on. We will do as they did that day. We will sing a hymn as we go out. Our ushers are going to give us direction. We want everyone in the sanctuary to please stand. We will exit from the rear first. There's a trash can outside for you to deposit your communion elements in. God bless you. We'll see you either in person or online next week. Amen. And I know it for me. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it Him in the 